Welcome to this tutorial. In this video, I'll be sharing on how to solve a linear uh, programming problem using simplex method. I've just gotten a question on maximization problem. For minimization problem, you can still follow me on my YouTube channel and check um, for the tutorial. Okay. The question reads, solve the linear programming problem using simplex method. Linear programming problem, LPP, using simplex method, okay? And the problem reads, maximize 12x1 plus 16x2. This, we call it as the objective function. That's what we are trying to achieve. We are trying to maximize, so this can be can be profits and not cost. Cost we try to minimize most of the times, so this can be revenue or profits rather. So we call this uh, function as um objective function. Objective function is what we are trying to um achieve. Okay, subject to. Subject to 10 x1 plus 20 x2 less than or equal to 120. Less than or equal to 120. So what we are saying is that maybe these could be resources, materials, or maybe labor hours or machine hours which are required to make product x1 and x2. So when we are told to say this is subject to, meaning these are constraints. These are constraints. The constraints, um, the constraints are the ones um, which might be um, hindering us from achieving the best possible results, but we need to use them in the best possible way to maximize our profits. So if these were labor hours, we are saying product X takes 10 labor hours, that's X1 and product X2 takes 20 labor hours. And the labor hours are limited to 120, meaning they are less than or equal to 120, meaning we can only use less than 120 hours or exactly 120 hours. We cannot exceed that because we have that limitation. Another constraint is HX1 plus HX2 is less than or equal to 80. We don't know what that, whether those are materials, whether those are materials or still they are just uh, labor hours or machine hours. Okay? But all we know is these are constraints. Okay? And then we have the last condition. The last condition does not exhibit a constraint. It exhibits the non-negative variables. We just say non-negative here. Non-negative. What does this mean? We are simply saying x1, comma x2 should be greater than or equal to zero. So let's let's think for instance x1 being a product. Let's say these are. These are books that we are producing, two types of books, okay? So when we say x1, comma x2 should be greater than or equal to zero, we are simply saying in no any other period are we going to produce um, x1, which will be less than zero. Because when we say it's less than zero, we are simply saying it's a negative value. I don't know if we've seen negative books, like negative 10 books. How do they look like? Such doesn't exist. So we put a condition to that to say, actually, x1 and x2 should never be a negative. That's why we are putting to say greater than or equal to zero. I'll jump straight into calculating, and uh, I'll be showing formulas step by step as we are going. Of course, um, it, it looks like a complex question, but once you master the formulas, um, these are uh, 
this problem in um, operations research management or any other uh, management um, um, a management course or management accounting course is basically simple. All right. So let's jump to the solution. Solution there, I will, I will insert a table, but if you're using a plain paper, uh, maybe you're on the advantage because I'm using the screen, I can just insert a table as, as, as you're using a plain paper, it becomes more easy. So I don't know the number of boxes that I need to, or the number of cells that I need to include here. Maybe I can say um, nine, and eight, nine and eight, just to give an allowance. Whatever number of boxes are going to remain, it's fine. Uh, nine and eight is okay, I think, for now. I have to put that. Okay. Let me do this. Okay. So the first thing I'll do is to come up with a standard form of the problem. The standard form of the problem, I'll explain what it is. So standard form of the problem, this is a mark on, on its own. Standard form of the problem. Okay. So standard form of the problem, I would rather just borrow the entire these equations. I'm just going to change them a little bit and you see the way I get to change them and what they become. Okay. So this is the original problem. And if you can see from the original problem, we are going to add two slack variables to the objective function. Why are we adding two slack variables? Because we only have two constraints. This equation and that equation. If we had three constraints, we're going to add three slack variables. So I'm adding two slack variables with their coefficient being zero. When I say coefficient, I mean the number in front of the slack variable. Like here, the coefficient of x1 is 12. The coefficient of x2 is 16. So I'm adding two slack variables here. With, yes, slack one. or S slack one and slack two. I'll just copy this quickly. And I've explained why I'm adding two of them. If the constraints were three, I was going to add three of them. So there I go. And then these ones, I'm changing them. This one is the first constraint. So I'll add a slack. I'll add a slack here, slack one. I'll add a slack there. Slack one, yes. Slack one here. I'll add a slack here. I'll add slack one because it's constraint one. And then where it says less than or equal to, I'll simply say equal to. Okay, so when I add the slack, I simply say equal to. Remember this ends you max in the exam. So don't forget to convert into standard form. That's your first step. This is slack two. I'm adding that S2. And then here we shall say equal to 80. Meaning I've converted this, this one into standard form. And then quickly. I'll come to this. There are new entries here because there are new variables. So they will be, sorry for that. So there will be slack one. And also slack two. Slack 
plug two there, they should be greater than or equal to zero. Greater than or equal to zero. This is the standard form, and I told you the standard form ends you max. What you basically do to convert this to the standard form is you add slacks for a maximization problem. So you add two slacks because there are two um there are two constraints, slack one and slack two to the objective function with their coefficient of zeros. And then to the constraints themselves, you just add the slacks. Slack one equal to 120 and slack two equal to uh 80. And then that's how you convert this problem to standard form. Now that you've converted to standard form, we can make the initial table, usually known as initial tab leaf. Initial tab leaf. Okay. So the initial tab leaf, how do we make the initial tab leaf? I'll simply say, um, I like starting with the word basis. So you can start with basis. Basis, we are going to list all the variables. We have x1, we have x2, we have s1, we have s2. Wow, I'm remaining with uh, two slots here. Then we have solution. Solution is where we say equal to. And then at the end there, we have ratio. At the end there, we have ratio. That's how you make the first W or the initial W. So you say X1, X2, and you just list all the variables in the line where it says basis. X1, X2, S1, S2, then solution, then ratio there. Okay? And then here on top, we shall say coefficient. CJ, I like to put it that way, coefficient of basis. Coefficient of basis. So the coefficient of um, this basis, when it comes to the objective function, we have 12 for x1. Here the 12 I'm talking about. And then we have 16 for x2. And then we have 0 for s1. 0 there. And then that's how it comes out, like that. Then we now indicate the two slacks that we have beneath basis. Beneath basis, we get the two slacks that we have, S1 and S2. OK? So um, what are the coefficients for slack one, uh, for this uh, constraint one? Under x, x1, it's 10. So under x1 there, I'll put 10. Under x2, it's 20. And then um, where s1 and s1 are meeting, here, I'll put one. Here, this is s2. And this is S1. They are not meeting. I'll put, I'll simply put zero there. What is the solution? The solution is 120, where we say equal to there. S2. Let me keep the screen large. Eight there, which is the eight, which is here. And then eight here. This is S1, sorry, this was supposed to be S2. Yes, this is S1 and S2, meaning I'll put zero there because they are not meeting, but here S2 and S2 are meeting at this point. So I'll put a one there, then solution will be 80, okay? Here I can say coefficient of basis. Coefficient of basis for for slack one. The coefficient for slack uh, slack one is zero. I'm picking it from there. Zero. And also for slack two, it's zero. So I'll put zero 
zero there. Okay, let me just put this on the middle. There we go, fantastic. Okay, so we have we have this problem here. Okay, so immediately beneath beneath this we will put CJ. I know ZJ, sorry. We are putting ZJ. ZJ is a formula. I will indicate how it is calculated. ZJ is calculated in this manner. ZJ, let me not even put it here. Let me put it just beneath the slacks there. ZJ are the numbers which are supposed to come here. Those are ZJs. So if I'm picking the number which is supposed to come here, the ZJ will be, the ZJ will be, this zero here, multiply by 10, zero multiply by 10 plus, I want the number which will come here. So I'm saying, again, zero multiply by eight there. This is giving me zero. So I'm putting zero here. So in the same manner, this multiplied by 20 will give us zero plus this multiplied by eight will give us zero as well. So zero plus zero, it will be zero. For here, it will be zero multiplied by one there, which is zero. So since all these are zeros, it simply means that whichever number they will multiply with will be giving us zeros. So it's just as well we we'll put zeros here to save time, zero there, zero there. Okay. So that's how we get the ZJ. And then we are going to get CJ minus ZJ. CJ coefficient minus ZJ. Okay. Let me just stretch this a little bit. Yeah, stretch out. So now CJ are these numbers on top there, and ZJ are these numbers below here. So you are getting these numbers on top like 12 minus 0. 12 minus 0 is 12. 16 minus 0 here is 16. And then 0 minus 0, it's 0. 0 minus 0 there, it's 0. Fantastic. Now from here, we need to do uh, some computations and um, some computations we are going to do are going to help us to choose um, the key row. So the first thing we are going to do is identify the key column. The key column is the column with the biggest CJ minus ZJ. The key column is the column with the biggest CJ minus ZJ. So the biggest number here, and it has to be positive. So the biggest number here is 16 there. So meaning our key column is basically, our key column is basically this, the entire column there. That's our key column. Okay. So now we are going to get the numbers in the key column, which are these ones. Let me shade them green. That's too light. Okay. Yeah, even red maybe. 
Okay, just green like this. We're going to get these numbers and divide them into these numbers to get the ratio there. So we have uh, uh, 120 divided by 20. What do we get? One twenty divided by twenty. One twenty divided by twenty. We have six there, and then we are going to say eight divided by eight. We are dividing the numbers in the key column. So eight, the solution divided by the number in the key column. Eight divided by that, it's giving me ten. All right. So from here, we're going to choose uh, the number, which is the smallest ratio. Here we have to choose based on the biggest number, but here we are choosing the smallest ratio. So the smallest ratio is six, and that will form our key rule. Six, and this will form our key rule. This guy here is forming our key row. Yeah, as long as you're able to identify it anyway. Let me just quickly do that because I don't want confusion at the end of the day. Yeah. So that's our key row. So where the key row and the key column are meeting, this is the key column here from down way up to up, and the key row is here. Where they are meeting, they are meeting here at 20. Where these two are meeting, we shall call that as the key number. And I need to just separate it from every number. I can still give it a rate. We call that a key number. Let me just bold it, yes. We call that the key number, okay? So from here now, we can make uh, another table, which we shall call as a second iteration. We are making another table. Second iteration. You remember what I said about how to make a table? You start with your basis there. So we are making another table. We shall call this a second iteration. Yeah, just like that. No harm. Second iteration there. We have it there. And then what we're going to do here is I'm going to empty everything here. Yeah, I'm going to empty everything which is inside here. So I'll delete those things. So I assume you've just made another table. Now, where there is a key number here, I'm just saying, where there is a key number here, what is the coefficient on top? The coefficient is it x2 and what is the coefficient horizontal wise the coefficient is s1 sorry not the coefficient the variable the variable here is x2 the variable this side is s1 so where there is s1 there in our next table where there is s1 there we'll put x2 because of this key number it has affected that. Let me indicate by simply saying, coming downwards like that, where there's a key number, and then we get to go this side to search for the um, variable, the basis. So X2 will come where there's S1 there, okay, in our new table. So let me do that. So where there's S1 here, I'll put X2. 
And when I put x2 here, the coefficient of basis will change because the coefficient of x2 is 16. Here, I shall put 16. Okay? That's one change which has been seen. And to get the new, this is row one. <laughs> row one there, this is row two. Row two there. And to get the new, to get the new row one, we'll divide all these numbers, all these numbers in the key row. We'll divide them by 20. All these numbers in the key row, we'll divide them by 20. Okay? Why? Because this is a key row where there's a key number. So if we are making a new row where there's a key number, divide all those numbers with a key number. So new row one, row one, new row one, new. A, C, odd number, divide by key number. Okay? So the first one is basically the odd number is what? The first one, the odd number is 10. So we have 10 divided by 20. Okay? And the numbers are beta put in fractions. 10 divided by 20 will be 1 over 2. On the calculator, on the calculator, for those using um, either Sharp or Casio, you see somewhere where there is a, a fraction, where there is a fraction function, which is a a plus a a b. Let me just show that. Let me see if I can quickly show that function. Um, no, 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 you can find it. Let me just uh, indicate uh, the position where it is. Um, mostly in most calculators, it's above the negative sign, not the minus sign, above the negative sign. There is where it's written A, then B slash C. So if you, are, you want your answers to become in fractions, like I'm doing, you are going to say uh, 10, you're dividing, remember, I don't want to see 0 0.5 in your solutions. So you're going to say 10 and then press that button where they is A, B, slash C, okay? So you first press 10 on the calculator, then press that button where there is A, B, C, okay? It will bring fraction and then divide by 20. Just press 20. Okay, then it will give you one over two. So the calculator automatically gives you a fraction. So this is one over two. This is what we desire to see in your solution. So the next number here is 20. So it shall be 10 divided by 20. Remember, we are saying new row is odd number divided by key number. So it shall be 20 divided by 20. So again, 20. I will press the ABC button. Again, 20. Then it gives me one. Okay. The next one is one over 20. So this will be one over 20. One divided by 20. And then the next one is 0 over 20, which will give me 0. And then the next one is 120 over 20, which will give me 6. Thank you so very much. Uh, now follow me as I create the formula for O2. It's very interesting. The formula for row 2 is given by the odd value in the odd cell. Odd value minus CKC. 
When I say CKC, I simply mean corresponding key column number. Corresponding key column number. So I'll go to the key, key number. I will see the corresponding key number for row two. And this one does not change. Minus, minus new values. New values in row one. New one. New row one. Okay, minus new values in row one. So let me sort out the idea of CKC, the uh, corresponding key column number. So we identified the, uh, the key column number is 20. So what number is corresponding to it in row two? The number that is corresponding to it in row two is eight. So the corresponding key column number for my formula will be eight and it will not change. It will be eight until I finish dealing with row two. The corresponding key column number is eight. It's the one which is um, corresponding to the 20, the key number in my new row two. So this, this eight will not change. It will consistently be there. So now I get it. I'll put it uh, in the formula. So now let's start quickly. Um, row two. Mm -hmm. There we go. Old value. What's the old value for the first cell? The first cell here. What's the old value? The old value was eight, which is this number here. The old value was eight. So I'm simply saying eight minus open brackets, corresponding key column number. We identified it. We said it's a eight. This eight I'm picking. It's this eight here, which is corresponding to the key number. And I said this shall not change. It shall maintain its position until I'm done with row two. Minus new row one. New row one is what? Is it minus? Sorry, this should be multiplication. Sorry, I misled you. This should be multiplication here. Yeah, multiply by, yes, multiply by new column number. Sorry for that. Oversight. So um, half there. So I'm bringing the half here, which is the new column number, or the new row number there, or the new row one, yes, which is there. So this will give me um, eight minus open brackets, eight multiplied by one over two, it's giving me four. So the first number here will be four. Four there, okay? So the first number there will be four. Let me go to the second number. So odd value, I'll get also the odd value for the second number in the second cell. So the second number is eight, eight here. So odd value, odd value is eight. So eight there, odd value eight. Mm -hmm. The corresponding key number will not change. This one, the CKC, I said it doesn't change. We've already identified it, which is uh, the eight here. And then I'm, I'm applying this. I'm applying this with a new row number. The new row number is one there. And this will give me zero. So here I shall put zero. This, these are wonderful. Um, Computation, it's only that I'm, I'm teaching, otherwise they are faster. You can run through them quickly. So now the odd value is zero here. The zero there under S1. The odd value zero. Minus the corresponding key column number, which does not change. Then I'll need the new number in S1. The new number is one over 20 in S1. 1 over 20. Mm -hmm. There you go.
this is giving me um, a uh, zero minus open brackets eight multiplied by one over twenty. Give me negative two over five. Negative two over five. Yes. So my negative two over five will be here. Very interesting mathematics. All right, so now here we come. S2, the old value under row two in S2, odd value S2 under row two, there it's a, a one. So I need to put one here where there is odd value, one there. And then this key column number, we've already identified it. It doesn't change, remember what I say, but I need to change the new number here. The new number under S2, the new number under S2 is zero here new number in the new table, zero here. And this gives me one after computing. The next one, The odd number under solution is what? Eight. The odd number under solution was eight. The key column number is not changing there. And the new value under solution is six. Here we go. What is this giving me? Thirty-two. Thirty-two is what I'm obtaining here. So now I have thirty-two here, and then I need to find the ZJs. All right. So, wow. ZJ. ZJ for the first one. I'll do for the first one and the second one. In the rest, I'll just put the answers. For the first one, ZJ, which will come here, it's 16 multiplied by half plus zero multiplied by four. This is giving me eight. So there will be eight here. Here, for the next one, the next number which will come here will be 16 multiplied by one there plus zero multiplied by zero. That will be 16. The next number which will come here is 16, 1 over 20 multiplied by 0, multiplied by negative 2 over 5. 16 from there multiplied by that, that multiplied by that. Giving me 4 over 5. over five and then here it will be 16 multiplied by 16 multiplied by zero there and zero multiplied by one here 16 multiplied by zero there and zero multiplied by one what do we obtain here we obtain a zero 
Then in the solution, it will be 16 multiplied by 6 there, then 0 multiplied by 32 there. 16 multiplied by 6, 0 multiplied by 32. 0 multiplied by 32. Okay, 16 multiplied by 6. Wow. 96. Now I'm finding CJ minus ZJ, the same procedure, these numbers on top, minus these numbers here. Okay, so 12 minus 8. Four, then 16 minus 16, zero, then zero minus 4.5, negative, or not 4.5, 4 over 5, negative 4 over 5, then zero minus zero, that will be zero. I just uh, subtracted these numbers on top here, minus those numbers below there. Okay, now we have that. Now, if you see our initial table, all the numbers here were positives and zeros. Now, the condition to know whether we have reached the final solution is to check these numbers if they've now been converted into negative and zeros. Because our initial table, they were positives and zeros. So when you look at these numbers, of course, we have a negative 4 over 5, but the other 4 is still a positive. So meaning the problem is here. This has to become a negative. So we are going to develop another table and do the solution. If it becomes a negative, then we will say to say we've reached optimality and we found the final solution. So for now, we haven't found this, uh, the final solution because there is a positive number in our CJ minus ZJ. All of them, they have to be converted into either negative or zeros. So now I shall copy this table and I shall... Um, proceed with the same uh, procedure. So the first thing we are done is to identify the biggest positive number under this line so that we can identify a key column. So the positive number, the biggest positive number here is four. So our key column is this column here. Our key column is this column. And then we'll get the numbers which are in the key column here. Okay? To divide them into the solutions, that side. Okay? So it's these numbers here. Again, I'll just, I shall just put them in red for simplicity sake. Red against these numbers here. So we are simply doing 6 divided by... 6 divided by half. Gives me 12. And then 32 divided by 4 there. Gives me 8. When we are choosing the key row, we choose from the smallest uh, ratios here. Smallest ratios here. The smallest ratio is 8. So meaning that will be our key rule. So it's just a repetition of the same things. And I guess the table we are doing is the last table and we'll reach the solution. So this is our key rule. And our key column is this one. Where the key look, the key rule is meeting the key column. They are meeting at four here. This is our key number. This is our key number now. Let me just board it and leave these ones back because uh, I've explained what I was doing there to have these numbers there. So that's our key number, four. So now we are making the third iteration table, which I guess should be the last table to give us the final solution. Say here. 
said send no said said here said iteration okay so in our said iteration table uh we know the key row is this one we can agree this is the key row remember what we did to find new numbers in the key row we are going to divide all the numbers by the key number we're going to divide all the numbers by the key number and the key number is four so we are dividing all the numbers here with the key number which is four so new row two row two new row two it's odd divided by k so the first one will be four divided by four the k number is four four divided by four sorry we've forgotten one thing remember what we did where there's a key number there we did this we said this comes here and it proceeded to go this side. So meaning X1 will replace S2. So X1 there replaces S2. And the coefficient of X1 is 12 from the objective function. And then this can go now. I can start computing. I'll just compute in this table. Let me delete these numbers here. Mm -hmm. So we're finding row two, new row two, odd number divided by key number. So the odd number of row two, the odd number of row two is four there. And the key number is four. Four divided by four. One. Next, the odd number in iteration two under x two is zero. Zero divided by four, zero. The odd number here is negative two over five. So negative two over five divided by four. Divide by four is giving me one over 10. Is giving me one over ten. Negative one over ten, actually, not just one over ten. Negative one over ten, because it will be negative two over five divided by four. The odd number here is one. One divided by four. One divided by four. We have one over four. And the solution value, the odd number is 32. 32 divided by four. Giving me eight. So we are done with uh, row two. But we need to create the formula for row one. We need to create the formula for row one. Okay. And the formula for row one is not difficult. Remember how we create the formula for the row where there is no key number. We simply say odd value minus corresponding Key column number multiplied by 
new number in row two. Because row two, that's where there was a, a key number. So new number in row two. That's it. So I'll go there to identify the corresponding key column number, which I say that's the number that will not change until we we done dealing with the uh, um, row one. Okay. The number that will not change until we're done dealing with row one. The corresponding key column number. So the key column number was this one. So the corresponding column number is half there. Half there, one over two. So the one over two will not change in my formula under CKC. It will maintain its position until I'm done with the process. So I can even press it there, one, two there. So what's the old value of row one? Old value of row one, this one, half. I say half there, minus half multiplied by a new number there. What's the new number? Under row, 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 row two, the new number is one there. I'll put one here. And then what I'll get here is going to be zero. What I get here is going to be zero. What I'm going to get there is going to be zero, so I'll put zero here. Okay. Uh, old number in the next one is one. One, then the half there, the key corresponding number I said it will not change. Then here it's a uh, new number is zero. The new number is zero there. So this will become one. Old value under S1, 1 over 20. Half there will not change. What's the new value there? The new value is negative 1 over 10. So 1 over at minus open brackets, one over, one over 20, minus open brackets, one over two, multiplied by negative one over 10, close brackets. There I go, gives me positive one over 10. Gives me positive one over 10. Get back to check for the old value under S2. Old value under S2 is zero. Then the half is not changing. Remember our rules. And the new number under S2 is one over four. One over four. I process on the calculator. Negative one over eight. Negative one over eight.
And what did I do? Sorry, the old value was zero, yes. And then the half is not changing, then one over four. Okay, we are we are okay. Then in the solution value, the old value was six. Six. Half is not changing. The new value there is eight. So here we are getting two as our final answer. We're getting two as our final answer there. And then with this, now we can find the CJ. ZJ, I mean. ZJ, ZJ, the formula you still remember, I guess. ZJ, the formula is, we are multiplying these numbers, these ones here and these ones and add them to get the number here so for the first one it shall be 16 multiply by zero which is the 16 here multiply by the zero there close brackets plus 12 multiply by one This is equal to 12. For the next line, it will be 16 multiplied by 1 plus 12 multiplied by 0. It will give us 16. The next one here, it will be 16. 16 multiplied by this 16 multiplied by 1 over 10. And 12 multiplied by negative 1 over 10. 16 multiplied by 1 over 10. Sixteen multiplied by 1 over 10 plus 12 multiplied by negative 1 over 10. Two over five. And this one shall be 16 multiplied by negative 1 over 8 plus open brackets 12 multiplied by 1 over 4. The 16 is this one here to multiply with that one plus this one here to multiply with that one to give us the answer here. 12 multiplied by 1 over 4. Yeah, it shall give us 1. The last one there is 2, uh, 16 multiplied by 2, plus open brackets, 12 multiplied by 8. To give us 128. Fantastic. So now we are finding the CJ minus ZJ. CJ minus ZJ is these numbers on top here minus these numbers here. 12 minus 12, 0. 16 minus 16, 0. 0 minus 2 over 5, negative 2 over 5. 0 minus 1, negative 1. And then when you look at uh, the numbers here now, it looks like we've reached the optimality. So we found the final answer. The optimality has been reached, which is we have negative numbers, all of them below there, and zeros. We started with the initial table, positive numbers and zeros. And I said to reach optimality, we need to have negative numbers and zeros below there. So the optimality has been reached. So we reached the optimal solution. So we are stopping here. Optimality reached. Meaning the value of 
x1, x1 here, the value should be 8. Have you seen? x1 here. The value should be 8 in the solution there. So x1 is equal to 8. And x2, x2, which, which is this one, is equal to 2. And the z, which is the optimal solution, z is equal to 128. z here, equal to solution there, 128. What does this imply? It simply implies that to maximize our profit, we should produce eight units of X1 and two units of X2, and it will give us the maximum profit of 128 given this condition here. In simple terms, we can even say, we pull out the objective there, we can pull out the objective function there, we can simply say where there is the x1 there, where there is x1 here, 12, where there is x1 there, we shall put 8. And where there is x2 there, we shall put 2. 16 multiplied by 2. And the overall result will be 128. So you are done. You've solved the problem using the simplex method. Thank you so very much for watching this video.